All right, in this scene, we're gonna talk about the loop diuretics, and it's going to be represented by this loop over here, who has diarrhea and needs to use the bathroom. So in this scene, we're gonna talk about the loop diuretics. We're gonna start off with the sulfonamide derivatives, and then we're gonna talk about ethacrinic acid. So let's begin our scene over here. So you might have noticed that this loop over here is actually quite furious. And it's because he's been having trouble finding a bathroom all day. Furious is going to remind us of furosemide. And if you'll note, inside his loop over here, he actually has a torso randomly lodged in it. Torso for torsemide. And we could see the bum of this torso over here to remind us of bumetanide. So furosemide, bumetanide, and torsemide are the loop diuretics that we want to discuss first. So let's talk about the action of these loop diuretics, their clinical use, and their adverse effects. And at the end, we're going to talk about ethacrinic acid. So loop diuretics work by inhibiting the sodium, potassium, and chloride co-transporter of the thick ascending loop of Henle. That's why over here, we have this nephron guy over here, whose face is on the thick ascending loop of Henle. And by inhibiting the co-transport system at the thick ascending loop, they block sodium reabsorption. Now, normally water follows sodium, but since we're blocking this reabsorption, less water will be reabsorbed, and water will be let out in the nephron into the collecting duct. And that's why these are diuretics, because water is lost. And that's why they're used, of course, in the treatment of edema. This hydrant in the back of the scene over here is going to remind us of the edema. Loop diuretics are also used to treat other edematous states, such as heart failure, cirrhosis, nephrotic syndrome, and pulmonary edema. They're also used to treat hypertension. And it's used to treat edema. Now, oh, in his diarrhea over here, we see the cheese. Cheese in our videos represents calcium. This is going to help us remember that calcium is lost due to the loop diuretics. The loops lose calcium. And this is because calcium and magnesium normally follow the electrochemical gradient and therefore they're going to be reabsorbed. But since the loop diuretics block the sodium reabsorption, calcium and magnesium will also not be reabsorbed and they will be let out in the urine. So calcium ends up in the urine. And that's why loop diuretics are used to treat hypercalcemia because they let out calcium into the toilet. Now, on top of this nephron gun over here, we notice this CD that's randomly shooting up, and it says rated PG on it. PG for PGE. The loop diuretics that we're discussing stimulate PGE release due to their vasodilatory effect on the afferent arteriole. We notice that this guy is running on top of this metal doll over here. Metal doll for medulla. The loop diuretics that we're discussing abolish hypertonicity of the medulla, preventing concentration of the urine. And finally, this N guy over here who's sad. The N guy who's sad for NSAIDs. These loop diuretics are inhibited by NSAIDs. Okay, now let's talk about the adverse effects of these loop diuretics. And for that, let's take a look at the bathroom. Here is the bathroom. We notice the toilet over there. Oh, there it is. Here is the bathroom itself. And we see a sign on it that says no water. This is gonna help us remember the dehydration. An adverse effect of these loop diuretics is dehydration. We also see these two hippo statue things over here on the side of the bathroom. One has a banana in his mouth and the other one has a magnet. Hippo banana for hypokalemia. Due to the decreased potassium reabsorption, potassium ends up in the urine which can lead to hypokalemia. The hippo with the magnet reminds us of the hypomagnesemia. Again, because magnesium ends up in the urine. We see a goat over here randomly at the entrance to the bathroom to remind us of gout due to the uric acid reabsorption. And we see this hearing aid over here to remind us of the ototoxicity. Now, let's finally talk about this surf boat over here. That's gonna remind us of sulfa, sulfa allergy. But you may have noticed that this surfboard is not totally in the bathroom. And why is that? But for now, just remember that sulfa allergy is an adverse effect of the loop diuretics that we've been discussing. Finally, let's get to ET over here who's crying. <laughs> ET over here who's crying for ethacrinic acid. Ethacrinic acid also inhibits the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter at the thick ascending limb but it's a non-sulfonamide inhibitor, which means it's not a sulfonamide. And that's why this surfboard over is over here, but it's not bothering ET. In fact, he explodes it. Sulfa allergy is not going to be a side effect in ethacrinic acid. But we do note that he has a very big hearing aid as ototoxicity is a major side effect of ethacrinic acid. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this scene on the loop diuretics. Stay tuned for our next video and take care.